everyone, we are back to reviewing certain things. We are reviewing these certain things. We are reviewing the Monolith USB DAC versus the AudioQuest Cobalt. Now, previously I had uploaded a video with an unboxing and my initial impressions, and I had told you that the USB DAC from Monolith is, in fact, a better financial purchase than the Cobalt, and that both of these sound exactly the same to me. Uh, that remains my opinion after extensive listening to both devices. The question that remains is why compare the USB DAC, the $100 USB DAC versus the $300 Cobalt? Why not start off with the black? I don't have the black. I don't really want to spend $100 to get the black because it seems totally pointless for me to do that. Uh, why not compare it to the red? Why compare it with AudioQuest Best? Because here's the point. I think AudioQuest is, sh is short selling its products on purpose. I think that they purposefully limit what they provide in each subsequent product so that they can have something else in the future to provide and to sell you, to try to convince you through their shills, through their marketing, that you absolutely need the next color of the dragonfly. Perhaps it's going to be purple, the dragonfly purple and, or magenta, and that's going to be much better than the cobalt. But my concern is that when uh, AudioQuest or any company really does something like that, you are being misled into believing that this is the best that you can possibly find. You must buy the best because it comes from a known name brand, whether or not it has good reviews, whether or not people actually, in fact, users really like the product. Versus the monolith, which is plastic, and people complain about its build quality and say, yeah, it's not for me, and it sounds too harsh, and blah, 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 without actually doing a back-to-back -back comparison. So I'm using AudioQuest Best versus Monoliths only. Now Monolith, according to my conversation with the head honcho over at Monolith, uh, does have plans to release a second version of the USB DAC. They won't tell me what it is. They won't tell me when it's being released. They won't tell me what the additional features are going to be, but they very much do intend to continue with this product. AudioQuest's $300 USB DAC here is good for what it does. But I think that you're spending $200 more compared to the Monolith for no audible gain. A lot of people might say, I would prefer to spend the additional $200 on the Cobalt because it provides better build quality. That's arguable because the Cobalt, the Red, the Black, all three of these devices have known issues with build quality, quality that the 3.5 millimeter port here wiggles. And in fact, mine's starting to wiggle too. You can see that. It doesn't sit flush with it. There are people who, when they shake the cobalt, can hear something in there that's loose. There are people who receive their product and it's just DOA. So there are clearly issues with manufacturing. On the other hand, you have this, which, you know, it's plastic housing. And consequently, if you step on it, yeah, it'll break. But just because that the AudioQuest Cobalt has a metal housing doesn't mean that it's necessarily a better build quality. It's just, you know, like I said, there are issues already with this. So you have to put everything into perspective. Okay? Now, here are our test parameters. We're going to have both devices plugged into my PC here. We're, they're both going to have a 3.5 millimeter cord that's going to go from the 3.5 into this switch. One's going to be the Monolith, two is going to be the Cobalt. The headphones we're going to use are the ones that I'm currently testing is the uh, Bass Audio G12. These are really, I think, interesting headphones. Uh, so I'm going to continue using these for this particular test. I have not, uh, I am not going to use Spotify for my test today because I have plenty of people who complain about that. Instead, I'm just going to go to my uh, FLAC playlist on my computer and there are three songs we're going to use. I think that these three songs provide a wide gamut of the possibilities, generally speaking. The first song we're going to use is a pop song, Churches, uh, Mother We Share is the track. The second song is Recognizer from the Tron Legacy soundtrack. And the third song is New Light by Kazuki. You can find all three of these songs on Spotify if you are a subscriber to Spotify, and uh, you can go along with that if you wish. So let's just plug these things in. Both plugged in. Number one goes to the monolith. Number two 
goes to the cobalt. Now, uh, headphones are already plugged in. So here's, here's the thing. There's a couple of issues that I've discovered while playing around preparing for this review. Number one, on Windows, uh, what happens with both devices, really, is that if you, if you plug in either one of these two devices, Windows automatically increases the volume to 100%. And if your volume on your music player on your computer is set at 100% and you start playing, your eardrums are going to pop, you're going to destroy your IEMs, whatever you're using. If you have headphones, it's probably not going to be an issue to destroy the drivers, but you're definitely going to hurt your, your hearing. So what I would recommend is whenever you're plugging either of these devices, and it doesn't matter which one, go into your Windows setting, select your particular device, in this case, the cobalt and then just bring it all the way down to zero start hitting this you know play the song and then bring up the volume to 100 percent making sure that your volume on your music player here for example aimp it's set to the volume you actually want to listen to so not 100 percent there and 100 percent here instead just leave windows volume at 100 percent and bring the volume on the aimp player or whatever player you're using to whatever volume you actually want to listen to now, you might be asking, why not control volume from Windows? Because some people argue that controlling volume on Windows truncates the bits or whatever nonsense. I don't believe that. I don't find that to be true in any of my desks. But to try to sideline those arguments, we're not going to do that. So for safety's reason only, please, I truly do suggest that you bring volume down to zero when you start off with either of these two. It happens with both. I suspect it's a Windows issue more than it is the product issue. And you can complain to Microsoft about that. The second thing is that the, um, the monolith actually shows up as a weird acronym, or not an acronym, but a weird list, a weird name on your list of uh, audio, audio devices. All the other audio devices that I have currently hooked up have their own identifier. Shit USB Gen 2, shit multi-bit, AudioQuest Cobalt, iFi, you know, so it says the product name, but with Monolith, it comes up as speakers MP29512. Not particularly helpful. If that's the only device you have, then it won't matter, but that's how it shows up. <clears throat> and so if you're looking for it and you're like, I can't see it, I can't see it, it's not showing up. Yeah, it is. It's under speakers. It's there. Don't worry. It's showing up. It's just that it's stupid and then it doesn't actually tell you the name that it should. That's the only issue. Okay, so let's switch to the uh, monolith. I brought volume down to zero because I want to follow my own advice. And we're going to go to the first song, which is Churches. And let me put this down so I understand and I remember where we started here. So we're going to Churches, the mother we share. I'm going to leave volume at probably about 20%. And I'm going to start. Now I'm going to increase volume on Windows to 100%. Perfect. Okay, so we're at 20% volume on AIMP, which is what I really care about right now. And it sounds loud enough for me to hear the music, but it's not particularly loud to block out external noise because these are open back headphones. So I'm going to increase to about 50%. And we're at 47, and this should be about 50. Yep, yeah, 50% volume. And 50% is loud enough for me to block out external noise. I can barely hear myself speaking. You could hear the drum but it doesn't have a whole lot of resonance. So it just boom, 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 boom. It doesn't linger. Very clean and clear, no distortion at all. You can hear the primary vocalist. She's easily one step ahead of the mix. I can hear the electric guitar, the bass guitar, the drum, the vocalist. And then there's this underlying synth sound all the way at the bottom of the mix. All those elements are audible. There's a bit of melding in the song, but that's more of the headphone than it is um, the, and the track than it is of the device. No harshness, no graininess, no peakiness. Her voice is... It, it doesn't have that sharpness to it either because there's some really cheap amplifiers and DAX that would take a female vocalist voice and it just increase the treble region in, the, in those voices that they're singing. And so you get these sibilant spikes that you really sh shouldn't get. 
and they sound real painful, but not so with the monolith. I'm going to increase the volume again to 70% or so. And it's really loud at 70%. It's so darn loud. I can't hear anything I'm saying right now. So let's bring this back down. Crystal clear, no distortion, no muddiness, uh, vocals absolutely audible without any um, uh, muddiness or harshness involved with them. Now let's switch to the Cobalt. I'm going to bring uh, this to the Cobalt. And currently, the Cobalt is set to no volume, which is what I want. And we're going to restart this song. And here we go. And I'm going to slowly bring up the volume. I'm going to now bring up the volume to about 40%. So we're about 40%. And it sounds, it sounds the same uh, volume-wise as to the monolith. I'm going to bring it up to 50%. Close enough to 50%. And I would say that it's the volume is exactly the same as with the monolith. It's the same amount of noise that's being uh, negated from the outside. So I, I can barely hear my own voice, just like with the monolith. The drums seem to have the exact same resonance as the monolith. It doesn't linger, it's just very, very quick. The voice of the vocalist sounds exactly the same as far as I can tell. No harshness, no gradiness. Again, she's about one step ahead of the entire mix. Sound stage sounds exactly the same for, you know, the DAC is only gonna provide so much differences in soundstage, but I don't hear anything that would make me say, oh, but the monolith is, sounds more closed off versus the cobalt or vice versa. It's not like that. No harshness, no gradiness, no peakiness. Again, no sibilance in the vocalist. Excellent separation, same separation between the drum, electric guitar, bass guitar, vocalist and the underlying synth music at the very bottom okay so it, it sounds exactly the same to me on both now let's switch back to the monolith where is it? here we go back to the monolith i'm going to turn off the uh, volume here and the next one we're going to go to is the tron legacy soundtrack if i could Here's the Tron Legacy soundtrack under Daft Punk. It shouldn't have been that, but here we are. The Tron Legacy soundtrack, we're going to Recognizer, which is here. And we're going to start playing that. I'm going to increase the volume. I'm going to bring this back down so we can restart. Volume is 50%. 52%. And I can hear the the kind of the rumble, and that you hear this big organ. You hear this electronic mix at the on the left side, the right side. No harshness, no distortion, no graininess. It's all very synthesized music because that's the way this the track is supposed to be. I mean, if you know anything about Tron or Tron Legacy, about that movie. So there's separation between the horns and the electric uh, fake acoustic music that they have mixed in. So they have electronic mix and pieces that they're supposed to mix in. So um, what they've done, at least part of the song, is there are certain elements in the song that are not actual instruments, they're just sounds that have been mixed together with the uh, the track. Like, there's supposed to be a buzzing at the very bottom, and you hear the buzzing coming in and out uh, at the very beginning, and then kind of in the middle of the song, you hear the string instruments, you hear the drum. Everything seems fairly separated. I hear no distortion, no harshness, no graininess. 
okay? So one of the things that I've, I noticed in Tron Legacy is, you know, there's this big organ sound, boom, at the very beginning of this song. And there's no real resonance to that, right? It just, boom, you can hear it, but uh, it doesn't go on and on and on and start interfering with other frequencies. Now that, that has a lot to do with the headphones we're using, but you also want to keep that in mind with the DAC that you're using, because if you have a warmer sounding DAC, uh, that sub bass, the bass can linger a little bit longer than a DAC that doesn't have that particular type of tuning, that particular type of chipset. For example, a Burr Brown chip versus an AKM or a Sabre chip is going to sound different from those two other chips, which are more analytical. So there is no warming effect that the DAC is adding to the sound. It's just boom, and then it keeps moving forward. There's no melding of the frequency from that big organ sound with all the other music that's uh, playing at the same time. Okay, so let's switch to the Cobalt. And I'm going to turn off the volume here. And here we go again with Recognizer. And I'm going to turn on the volume and restart. It sounds exactly the same. So there's absolutely no difference in volume. So they're both equally efficient, as far as I can tell. They both sound exactly the same as far as volume is concerned. And that big drum organ, boom, sounds the same to me. There's no lingering effect. It just, like right now, it's come. That's what it sounds like. It's very clean, clear, undistorted, just like with the monolith. You could hear the synthesized electric music. You could hear a little bit of that electric buzzing sound at the very bottom, just like with the monolith. It's not coming up particularly well but you can hear it, no different from the monolith. I can hear the drum, the string instrument, in, in plural, instruments, no harshness, no graininess, no treble peakiness. What I'm trying to figure out is if there's there's any melding of any of the instruments in either. And there is. There is, in fact, a little bit of melding amongst the instruments. But again, that's more of the headphone than it is of, of the DAX. Uh, but they don't sound dissimilar from each other. Meaning, if I switch back and forth, they sound exactly the same. So that's what I'm going to do. We are at 2 minutes and 38 seconds into this song. What I'm going to do is I'm going to listen for 5 seconds, 10 seconds, listen for 10 seconds on the Cobalt, skip back to 10 seconds, and then listen on the Monolith with the same um, portion of the song. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to go back. Just about there. And we're going to switch to the monolith. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go back a little bit further because we're going to start the song. And I'm going to... There we go. No, exactly the same. I can't hear any difference between these two. This song, this track so sounds the same with both DACs. Equal volume, same amount of separation, same amount of, of detail. Instruments sound exactly the same. The melding of the instruments sounds exactly the same. Nothing has changed. In fact, you could do a blind test going back and forth and you wouldn't be able to tell which one's which. All right, so let's go to our last song, New Light by Kazuki. If I can find our friend Kazuki here somewhere. And there we are. And we are going to start New Light. We already have the monolith ready to go, so here we go. Again, 50%. And 50% is exceptionally loud for both of these amplifiers uh, on these headphones. I could hear the wind. I could hear the footsteps crunching on the grass. 
I can hear the kids playing in the background. There's a synth instrument right now. There's a piano. That guitar is going to start playing in a couple of moments. Right about now. Everything sounds clear. There's good separation between all these little elements in the song. The playing of the kids, the, note, the sounds they're making, the wind, the footsteps, the piano, now the guitar, the synth sound kind of in the background, the bottom layer. Everything sounds spacious in the sense that none of the stuff is melding together. It doesn't sound muffled. It doesn't sound harsh. It doesn't sound grainy. Okay, so let's go back and we're going to switch to the cobalt. Turn this off, start, and there we go. I hear no difference between the two. Volume is exactly the same, as far as I can tell. The the sound of the kids sounds the same to me as it did on the monolith. So they sound distant instead of, you know, being up close and muffled. So there's no muffling sound. I hear the wind. I hear the crunching of the grass underneath the footsteps. I hear the piano. And in a moment, I'll start hearing the guitar when it comes in. Right about now. You can hear the synth at the bottom layer. Once again, everything has the same amount of separation as it did on the mall. The soundstage sounds exactly the same, as far as I can tell. No muddiness, no melding of the frequency so that I, I can't hear each particular element. Now you can start hearing the increase in the the synth music is coming up, no harshness, no graininess. Okay, so there you are. Um, so here's the thing, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain this to you and it's really difficult to explain if I have, if you don't have the ability to actually sit there and listen, right? So you've got these two amplifiers and DAX. And the thing that you, you are probably concerned about is how is it possible? How is it possible for the monolith at $99, this cheap plastic bit from a Chinese company to compete with the AudioQuest, the best? How is it possible? And I've had people comment about that. My, the only thing I can tell you is this. Price has very, very little to do with actual quality, sound quality. So there are plenty of people who swear by excellent build quality. There are plenty of people who will say that the RME ADI-2 is the best thing you've ever heard. I think it sounds fantastic, but there is no reason to believe that you need to spend the money on the RME ADI versus spending money on a significantly cheaper model, a cheaper product, that sounds equally as good to somebody. Price has very, very little to do. Now with the RME's example, it provides you a vast amount of controllability, a vast amount of features. This thing is built beautifully and it does everything you ever want a, an amplifier and a DAC to do. But this doesn't, see that's the thing. The Cobalt does not provide some of the necessary features, I think, that audio, audiophiles want, right? These days we've been talking about PCM versus DSD versus MQA versus Spotify streaming premium and blah, 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 blah. People are all constantly complaining and talking and arguing about audio quality, FLAC versus MP3 versus, you know, whatever. It, it's just on and on and on and on and on. And I find it a little disingenuous that the same people who claim 
that you need to have the best quality audio file, right? DSD or MQA if you're streaming. You got to use Cubas or whatever. You got to get the best you can possibly get. Those people are buying this, which doesn't even support some of the stuff that they want, like DSD. Neither of the, none of the Dragonflies support DSD. And so if you have, if you're that type of person that makes the argument, you need to have the best highest quality bitrate uh, audio track, and then you spend $300 for a device that doesn't even come close to ever providing that highest quality, then I think you're really talking about uh, out of two sides of your mouth. You're making an argument that other people should go out and spend money, a lot of money, on really you know, voluminous uh, audio tracks. Voluminous meaning very uh, high bitrate audio tracks. But then you also tell those people, buy a very expensive product that doesn't even play those audio tracks, that doesn't even support that type of uh, bandwidth. And that doesn't really make sense to me. Now, maybe it makes sense to you. Maybe you can find an excuse to speak out of both sides in your mouth. I can't. On the other hand, if you're the type of person that says, you know what, uh, DSD doesn't really matter. You can't really hear the difference between DSD versus you know PCM at 24-bit and 192 kilohertz. You can't hear the difference. Okay, if you can't hear the difference, you can't hear the difference. That's fine. In which case, you still shouldn't buy the Cobalt because it's $300 and you can get exactly the same sound signature for $200 less, right? So that's how I break down this, this analysis. You have a device like the Cobalt that costs an arm and a leg to buy, limited in features, not because it has to be limited, by laws of physics. It's not that. It's because the company wants you to buy the next one. That is the only reason. That is the only reason. There is no justification for not including DSD. None. Now you may say this thing comes with the Cobalt, comes with um, the USB decrapifier built in. And I've already done the review regarding the USB decrapifier nonsense that AudioQuest constantly talks about. There is zero donut difference because it's not true. I don't know how many times I have to say this to people. It's simply not the case. And if you have a modern device, if you have a modern laptop, modern desktop with good, decent components, you're not going to have a USB issue. And AudioQuest is just kind of selling you snake oil once again. So I'm telling you this because there is no noise difference between the two at all. Now, somebody might have the opportunity in the future to compare numerically, measure whatever the THD is um, between these two devices. Okay? And it might turn out that the monolith has more. THD <clears throat> than the Cobalt. But just because it has more, arguably, I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying, arguably, if it does have more, you still can't hear it. The difference has to be so darn significant that you are, you, your ears would have to be able to pick up the, the, the nuanced difference. So a difference of THD between, let's say, for the sake of argument, 0.002% versus 0.00%. 4%, you, you can't hear that difference. It's simply not going to happen. So anybody who's saying, well, this may have more noise, well, you, unless you can hear it, it doesn't matter. And I haven't heard it. The, the month of listening to this device over and over again using various sources, I haven't heard it. And neither have I heard it on this. So the bottom line, I think, for me, is that both these devices are very good at what they do. Now, I've had people tell me, you, meaning me, you uh, promoted the Cobalt over the Mojo, and now you're saying that the Cobalt's no good. Well, you have to understand something. This wasn't released when I actually did the comparison between the Cobalt and the Mojo. 
And I still think that the Cobalt has a, a financially, is a better decision over the Mojo. I, I, you simply can't make me change my mind about that. Now, when you bring in the Monolith, which is now available, and you put this into perspective, I think that the Monolith is financially, sonically, a better uh, solution to your USB DAC issue than the Cobalt is because it's cheaper and it provides exactly the same sound, exactly the same, no difference at all. I mean, there are little things here that will annoy people. I, I can understand that. The plastic build is not particularly helpful. The fact that it's larger is not particularly helpful. The fact that it has a weird naming convention inside Windows is not helpful. But other than that, those are minor gripes, in my opinion. Um, and you have to decide for yourself whether it's worth spending $200 more for whatever it is you think is uh, you're getting more out of the out of the audio quest. And that's something you have to justify for yourself. I simply don't think that there is justification. The Monolith provides DSD support where the Cobalt doesn't. The Monolith is $200 cheaper. The Cobalt is 300 bucks. The Monolith that sounds exactly the same as the Cobalt. And so based upon those um, findings, I would say, once again, that the Monolith is in fact exactly the same sonically as the Cobalt. And you go out and you decide which one you want to buy if you want to buy either of these. But don't be confused and don't be fooled into thinking that AudioQuest is the only real solution in town. They're not. Absolutely not. And they are overpriced for what they give you. Not enough stuff for the amount of price that, that they charge. I hope that this has been of some help. I will continue to uh, you know, review the monolith over time. Uh, if there's anything in specific that you want me to talk about regarding the Dragonfly Cobalt versus the monolith, let me know. And if I have enough requests over you know, a given period of time, I will make a video addressing each and every one of those questions regarding either both of these devices uh, compared. I hope this has been of some help. I hope that all of you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. In the United States, we get a three-day weekend, so we get Monday off, which is fantastic. And for those people who don't have the Monday off, I hope that you have a fantastic beginning of your week next week and that you have a fantastic rest of January. Take care.